asthma affects more than 230 million people around the world. Its causes are not fully understood and there is still no cure. For sufferers, an asthma attack might be a daily burden. Triggered at any time, this condition can even be life-threatening. I'm Dr Elizabeth Healy in the UK to see a revolutionary new treatment for severe asthma and to meet a patient whose life could be dramatically changed for the better. I've had asthma all my life. It just got progressively worse. When I was 17, I immigrated to Australia, and that was um, after about four or five months. Mm. My asthma got really bad, and that was the first time I got hospitalised and went on to steroids. And from then onwards, it just carried on. So what is it that actually brings on asthma for you? I'd say it's a day with a Y in it, because it could be anything. I have allergies, quite severe allergies. Um, Such as? Um, dust, trees, grass, cats, a lot of environmental things. It just feels like there's something not right and then all of a sudden my breathing becomes really laboured and very hard to breathe. It's like breathing through a straw. So quite frightening? Very, yeah, it can be. And frightening for the family. Mm -hmm. Amanda has an asthma attack every other day and is hospitalised every other month. At present, the only effective treatments available to her are drug-based. So this is your current medication that you're on? This is what I'm on at the moment. So... The wonderful steroids. Goodness. Oh, my word. Pleasant. So what would you actually take in the morning? All of this, basically, all of, all of it. So one of those, at the moment, Ten of those, puff of that, two puffs of that three times a day, and then those are my nebules that I have on my nebulizer. So oh. that's that's nearly forty tablets a day. Yeah. Plus. Shake me and I rattle. Goodness <laughs> me. I take it, and that's just the morning. In your experience, though, compared to other people and yeah. the extremes it can go, where would you place yourself? I would say it's severe, yeah. life-threatening. Amanda takes up to fifty milligrams of steroids a day. With this comes many side effects, including mood swings, tiredness, and weight gain. But today we are traveling with Amanda and her husband Dave to London for a final round of treatment using a new non-drug-based procedure known as bronchial thermoplasty. I've got a, a grandson, and I'd like to be able to help and look after him, but I'm so unreliable that I can't even do that. The hope is that this new therapy will halve the amount of steroids Amanda currently takes, as well as potentially halving the number of attacks and hospitalizations. Today is the last part of a three-stage process. The procedure is not a pleasant one, and Amanda will remain awake throughout. Are you nervous? A little bit. Yeah? only because I know what to expect. <laughs> this is a well-trodden path for Amanda. She's been visiting this hospital on and off for the last 24 years. Every new procedure, there's always hope, so you just... You don't want to put your hopes up so high that you get so disappointed, because I've been there before, but you're always hopeful that it's going to change a lot of things so that you can lead a, a normal life. There we are. See you later. Love, I love you too. Take care. Originally developed in the USA, bronchial thermoplasty is being carried out here in London at Royal Brompton Hospital by Dr. Palav Shah. So bronchial thermoplasty is a procedure where we perform bronchoscopically and thermoblate the smooth muscle in the airways and it's really specific for patients with asthma. What happens in asthma is that this smooth muscle thickens up. When it contracts, the airway completely closes up. What this procedure aims to do is to put a special catheter in, uh, which then expands and delivers heat energy. Now this heat energy cooks the muscle and the rest of the airway quite quickly heals up, just leaving uh, a complete loss of smooth muscle in the area that you've treated. 
So you're basically going to force this muscle to relax by, by heating it up well, so it can't contract again? Not just relax, we literally destroy it. So that muscle, actually, if you did a section of that airway afterwards, there shouldn't be any smooth muscle left. So we, we perform the procedure in sort of three steps. We tend to treat one lobe, the right lower lobe in the first instance, and then about three to four weeks later, providing the patient's recovered, we treat the left lower lobe, and then a further three to four weeks later, we treat both the upper lobes. So this is actually Amanda's third treatment, so she's gonna have both upper lobes treated. So all the previous treatment areas look nicely healed and the airways look very nice now, nice and pristine, look healthy. So we're going to start by treating the top of the right lung and we're just going to see the catheter going in and you can see the catheter going in and at the limits of my vision we will expand the basket open and energy is delivered. Close, and then open, and close, and open, and close completely. And there was another side branch in that area, so we'll go and treat those, because we want to treat absolutely every bit. Every time you can hear this, that noise just now, that's when he's actually switching on the machine and causing the, the smooth muscle to, to heat up and to, and to basically to, to destroy it. And he's moving it up and down so we can make sure that he gets every bit of lung. It's actually quite an uncomfortable procedure for Amanda because it's, she's awake, she's slightly sedated but she's awake and she can actually feel what's happening so she tends to cough a lot more and the treatment itself causes her to cough a lot more which obviously adds to the discomfort. You can see we have to be very meticulous with this procedure. We have to get every side branch. So you really know where you are, don't you? You really have to know your anatomy. There are a myriad of airways in the lungs that divide and subdivide. For the treatment to work, Dr. Shah must be sure to deliver blasts of heat at 65 degrees Celsius to every accessible area. Manage another five. We're almost done. Five oh. applications and we're done. Oh. Well done. Well done. So we're done. Oh. Initially, we're all going to be treating the very more severe end of the patients because we know that's where the greatest need is. But then we've got clinical trial evidence that it works in moderate and mild patients. So as it becomes more established, it may be widened out to treat more moderate patients and perhaps in the future maybe even mild patients. Well she did really well, I mean uh, it's a difficult long procedure, she, that was a 45 minute procedure, she had 104 applications of energy and obviously as you get to the end of the procedure it becomes more uncomfortable and she sort of reached her maximum dose of sedation but she did incredibly well, we achieved everything we wanted to. And the real benefit from the thomoplasty probably she's not going to see for another six to eight weeks. Yes, it was horrible. <laughs> it was um, probably the worst one that I've had out of the three, but I'm starting to feel better now. I'm reducing my steroids by five milligrams a week, so I'm down to 30. Before, when I've reduced, I've felt, I have felt um, a difference, whereas at the moment I'm reducing and it's, there's no change, it's, it's okay still. I mean, I went shopping um, yesterday with my mum and Hannah, um, and I was walking around. I was in pain, but I wasn't wheezing. Oh, darling. Oh, oh, look at that. Come and see your daddy. Oh. 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 
I feel like I let people down all the time because of my health. Um, so it would be nice to be able to say, yes, I can do something and plan it and not let people down, and not let this one down. Being a granny? Oh, I love it. It's the best medicine. Beats steroids any day. <laughs> <laughs>